I'm Akiko Fujita on the ground here in Las Vegas at CES 2024, where the conversation has been about artificial intelligence, specifically about AI in devices. Talk more about that. We've got Jason Banta. He is the general manager for client OEM at AMD. So AMD first unveiled its AI PC last year. Uh, certainly been a, a big focus here at CES this year. As you kind of assess the landscape, how are you thinking about this right now? Yeah, so AIPC is a big topic of conversation. Uh, thank you for joining us in the AMD booth to, uh, to talk more about that. Um, and AIPC is something that we're seeing emerge in the PC market overall. Uh, really what that does is that brings AI capability that typically you see in the cloud or in server devices, you bring that locally into the PC uh, to perform closer to the user. And that means a lot of things that you see from a generative AI capability in the market today, things like content creation or assistance, those things can actually happen local on the device, which brings a lot of cost and um, performance and privacy advantages to people accessing those generative AI experiences. As you mentioned, we introduced Ryzen AI, which was our uh, entry into that AI PC market last year. We were the first to bring that into the x86 PC market, and we're making it bigger this year in 2024 with higher performance Ryzen AI engine, uh, a larger portfolio on the notebook side, and we're also bringing it into the desktop market as well, bringing that Ryzen AI capability. So it's a big expansion for us from 23 to 24 uh, from an AI PC perspective. Uh, you mentioned a number of advantages when, when you get the AI on the device, but cost and performance specifically, mm -hmm. what shifts as a result when it's not in the cloud and on the device? Yeah, so so the, you know, using generative AI or inferencing in the cloud, uh, there are costs associated with that. Um, typically that is, you know, the, the person who is using the device or using that experience uh, is paying a cloud provider to access those generative AI capabilities. Uh, by having it local on the device, that model, that AI model, is really running closer to the user without accessing the cloud and requir requiring those cloud costs. Um, the performance of it, you see lower latency because you don't have to send that data up, get you know, make a request, send it back. You can actually make that, you know, whether you're generating an image or trying to get a response uh, from a prompt, you can do that with lower latency by having it on the device. And all that information stays on the device uh, privately as opposed to going up to the cloud. So there's a lot of advantage there from a cost perspective, latency performance perspective, uh, as well as a privacy perspective. So all that really, um, you know, the end user can see that uh, when they get an AI PC in their hands. We've certainly um, gotten to see, you could argue, a bit of a preview, right, in terms of the usage on the PC, Copilot being integrated to Microsoft, yeah. um, and Enterprise certainly uh, the, the first to kind of integrate in that way, but, but as you look beyond, how does this fundamentally change the PC experience for the user? Yeah, the, the AI experience, I think, is probably the most transformational thing we've seen in the PC in a very, very long time. You, you talked about Microsoft. Um, they uh, were partnering with us um, in 23, and we're going bigger in that partnership in 24. Uh, they, they lit up some of the earliest experiences we've seen from an AI PC perspective, uh, a lot of it around video conferencing. There are uh, image enhancement things you can do in video conferencing that you couldn't do before and you can do those at much lower power, much longer battery life by Microsoft building those experiences around AI PCs. You talked about Copilot, that ability to get that assistance and be able to use your device much more seamlessly, get what you want um, in natural language is something that Copilot brings. And so we're partnered with Microsoft on that as well. Uh, they're bringing Copilot to, uh, you know, to, to PCs. They, they talked about that uh, late last year. And so we're partnered with Microsoft on a number of those. They're really our premier um, ISV partner uh, when it comes to bringing AI PC experiences uh, to, to the local device. Uh, no surprise, we've seen some big announcements from your competitors out there as yep. well. We were just speaking to Intel the other day. Um, this really is, or seems to be the big focus. How does AMD position itself in this space? So we, um, we want to be first and best um, when it comes to AI PCs. Uh, that's, that's our uh, objective in, in all of our different IP, whether it's cores, graphics, or AI. Uh, it's first and best in everything. Um, from an AI perspective, you can really feel those performance benefits. So in 2023, we launched Ryzen AI with uh, 10 tops of performance. 
we increased that to 16 tops of performance for our XDNA engine, which is the engine that powers that, those AI experiences, enhance that performance, and you can really feel that when you get a response from a prompt, or whether you generate an image, some of the stuff that's going on behind us here, when you generate an image from a prompt locally on the device, it happens much faster because you don't want to sit, if you're trying to generate an image for a, uh, you know, a, a PowerPoint presentation or whatever, you don't want to wait too long for that response. So enhancing that AI performance brings that. Um, and so we want to stay ahead from an AI performance perspective. Um, and we want to do that in a much more accessible way. There's a lot of Ryzen PCs out there. So bringing that AI technology into the Ryzen devices is going to make it much more accessible uh, to the broader market. You mentioned desktop is sort of that next phase here. You've unveiled Correct. a desktop processor here at CES. It feels like there's more opportunity there, just given the, the power that exists, right, beyond the PC. I mean, how are you thinking about that piece right now within AMD? Yeah, desktop is an exciting market, and that's why we uh, made the move to bring out the 8000G um, products that, that have that Ryzen AI capability. Uh, the, a, lot of our, um, a lot of our core market and a lot of our um, you know, AMD audience is desktop-based. They uh, love the desktop device. And so bringing that capability in there, it's a lot of the same experiences um, that you would see on the notebook. So whether it's content generation or assistance, you know, uh, chat assistance, uh, you know, chat bots, et cetera, having those same capabilities on the desktop translate very well um, as, as they do on the notebook. So it's, it's a big market um, that, that uses desktop PCs today, and so we wanted to bring those experiences to them as well. Hmm. As you sort of sit here and think about all the possibilities, I and mean, we're really just in the beginning phase, it feels like, about generative AI, how should we be thinking about where AI is headed? It's, I think it's very early um, you know, in, in the uh, development of AI PC. I think the... Uh, the AI know, experience in general, not just within PCs, not just within desktops, but I mean, you're right in the thick of it. Right, it's, and it, AMD's uniquely positioned because we're, um, you know, one of the few players that can really offer AI from the cloud down to the PC. I mean, we're, there's, there's not many players in the market that can do that, and to your point, we're, we're very much in the thick of it. Um, the adoption curve of this, or you know, how exciting this is going to be, is really determined by those experiences and the development of those models. As we saw in 2023, the models got better and better. Um, you know, fewer hallucinations, uh, better accuracy, better accuracy to response um, to prompts. And so we're seeing that evolve with that model development and as people research that and, and find new ways to generate models, uh, we're seeing a lot of growth there. So they're looking at it saying, okay, this is more accurate. I can get more of the response I want from the model. Um, and that's, that's happening in real time. But also people are finding new ways. You know, you, you look at some of the models that are out there, they're finding new ways to plug it into productivity tasks or, or other things. So the adoption of those models into content generation or uh, getting responses or help with things, that's going to continue to evolve as it integrates into more applications that people are familiar with. Yeah, certainly points to uh, the big potential for AMD. Jason Benton, the general manager for client OEM, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, Kiko. Today.